Toto's Steve Picaro talks about leaving the band after the seventh one and taking some time for himself. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. I always love talking about bands with layers. For instance, in 1978, when the first Toto album, the self-titled album, came out, I was amazed that this band had four lead singers, Bobby Kimball, David Page, Steve Lukather, and Steve Piccaro. The latter three are still in the band. Now, Joseph Williams has replaced Bobby Kimball, who's now on his own. We just had a long interview with Steve Piccaro talking about not only that first album, but all the albums. We spent a lot of time on each one. But I had to tell him, when the seventh one came out, I was still reeling from a divorce. It became like a divorce album for me. The seventh one was also the very first printed piece that I ever had as a writer where I got paid for it. I became a professional writer. I was a quasi writer back then, but it was the first time I was ever paid for writing anything, a review of the seventh one. We talked about that album. You know, the, the seventh one was my divorce album. It wasn't a pretty time. I'm so sorry. Oh, by the way, speaking of that. Divorce or the seventh one? The seventh one. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, I'm really good at this. Um, when I saw you as being not an official member of the band, I have to tell you, man, I, I was bothered by them going, but he's still there, right? Because there was there's that thing, and I see it in fans in the comments of YouTube videos. But when the band is, when they see a fracture, it, it really scares these guys. And as a fan back then, I, I was bothered by that. But uh, you just needed to find your space. You know, um, real, honestly, it, it was, you know, you have to understand the time. And this is this speaks to the whole music business and even what's going on with Weezer right now. Um, we're in that the band had reached a point, things were strained with the record company, there hadn't been enough or big enough, it was, you know, bands with keyboard players were all of a sudden very unpopular, let alone two keyboard players playing kind of this quasi-orchestral kind of proggy stuff. They So all they were talking about is how we had to cut off all that stuff, we had to lose all that stuff. We had to get more basic, more rock and roll, you know, more down to earth and stop all this crazy stuff. And what were they, they were describing was the stuff that I felt like was my reason for being on planet Earth. You know what I mean? Is what they were talking about cutting out. That was my reason for being in the band. So, uh, you know, there was no, thank God, there was no huge fight. There was no ugly scene at all just after the Fahrenheit album. Um, you know, and I also really, you know, they were wanting me to take a less and less role. And there was a certain... Quite honestly, they, they never understood what I did. And, and uh, you know, when you're talking about my brother, Jeff, when you're talking about Paige and Luke, now, Paige was always very supportive, but Luke and my brother, Jeff, are such pure players. They're such pure musos, such, you know what I mean, such amazing musicians who just want to come in and play and nail the track and nail it, whether it's songwriting or whatever, they're so good at what they do. They're so proficient at their instrument and such naturals. Um, and I wasn't that guy at all. You know what I mean? I'm somebody who the studio is my instrument and I need to tweak and think about it and tweak some more and think about it some more and try this and try that. And they couldn't stand that stuff being around. You gotta understand and we produced ourselves, right? So it wasn't like they would just leave me with the producer and go home. For the most part, we were all there all the time. You know what I mean? When they're doing vocals, everything, all the whole band would be in the booth, you know, except the singer and stuff. It was, we really produced those albums together as much as maybe David was the leader. You know what I mean? We were all there all the time. So right away, I figured out to do, to take the sense to the level I wanted to take them to. I wanted to show everybody why I was why I was into all this stuff and how I could use it in a way that hadn't been, you know, in a musical way, you know what I mean, that I hadn't really heard yet, you know. Uh, um, and I just realized I wasn't going to be able to do that with the guys around. I had to, you know what I'm saying, I had to kind of, I was forced to learn engineer, really. I had no idea about any of that stuff. And it's funny, Jeff Workman, our engineer on our third album, who I really bumped heads with when we were making the album, he became the best friend in the world as far as, just teaching me game structure. I asked them the stupidest questions about, you know, why couldn't they use, if I recorded my own stuff, why couldn't they use it? You know what I mean? Because I was no engineer and the band would tell me, you know, we'll give you some slaves, but we're not going to use any of your stuff. You're no engineer. You know what I mean? And I just asked them, why wouldn't they be able to use it? And I learned game structure and learned how to, you know what I mean, how to record myself. You know what I mean? And they wound up using every single thing I did. You know what I mean? 
on Toto 4. That was all me by myself, you know. Then, right, the band was chasing hits and trying to chase Nirvana and all this stuff. And sure enough, it wasn't very successful. You know what I mean? Toto wasn't being Toto anymore. And I think they've struggled where now with like, you know, when you talk about the little things and Toto 14 was finally when I came back to the band and started recording, they know exactly what it is I do. I know exactly what it is I do. They were encouraging me to be the best Steve Picaro I can be. They wanted that quirky guy that went crazy and did those nuts things with the sins. They were begging me to be myself now. You know, that's the difference now between now and when I left the band. It was very different. You know, where now the guys are realizing what made us Toto, what separated us from everyone else, and to, that we need to celebrate that as opposed to trying to chase fashion and, you know what I mean, chase what we think the red record company wants us to do. You know what I'm saying? It's just, now we're just being the best Toto we can be. If I would have whispered in your ear when the first album came out back in, you know, 78, that you would be, you would be the Steve Picaro you are now, mm -hmm. would you have believed that? In a million years? Yeah, no, but uh, no, yes and no, to be honest with you. Yes yeah. and no. There was a part of me, there was a part of me that, uh, part of my ego, that that's, you know what I mean, that wanted to believe that at some point. But uh, yeah, I was always very happy being behind the scenes, being in a supportive role. Um, you know, I never had any pressure on me to come out with songs, you know, to come up with songs. It was, songs were covered. And if I didn't have one, it was fine. That's why, you know, one, one of my kind of regrets is that I, would have spent more time writing songs, had more songs on Toto albums, and uh, uh, spent less time messing around with synthesizers. You know what I mean? I s spend a lot of hours, you know what I mean, messing with that stuff back in the 70s when it was real uh, cumbersome and difficult to, to deal with that stuff. And Because uh, that was my job in the band, partly. But uh, I didn't know until I started working in film, you know, that I could work, I could write under a deadline. I could actually go in the studio when I didn't feel like it, and it was okay. I still could do good work. You know, I'm sure you don't. You'd rather. There's some days where, as much as I'm sure you love your job, your kid needs you, whatever, is something else is pulling you, and and you wish you didn't have to go to work. But uh, that doesn't mean that you do any any less of a job when you get in there. You know, and I, that was a long lesson for me to learn. You know, a hard lesson for me to learn. It took me a long time to realize that it didn't always have to be. Uh, it's sometimes it's just work, you know what I mean? And that's okay. Yeah. It's changed my work habit. In 2016, Steve Picaro released his first solo album. We'll have links to where you can pick it up in the description of this video. Also, there's 40 trips around the sun. The band is going on a North American tour and a big one at that. Starting in just a few weeks, there'll be links to their website where you can pick up some tickets. And also Steve Lukather, their lead guitarist and one of their lead singers, is releasing his autobiography. In just a few months, we'll let you know more about that as it comes. We've still got some pieces of our Steve Lukather interview that we're going to present to you in the next few weeks. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Mm -hmm.